Hey everybody, it's Jane from Norman S. Wright. In last week's video, I talked about low delta T syndrome. So this week I want to explain what low delta T is, what can cause it, and what it can do to your system. So let's get started. Low delta T syndrome is when the temperature difference between the supply and return water in a chilled water system is too low. Let me move this up and draw the primary secondary system that I showed last week. So we'll have primary pumps and chillers, and then we'll have the secondary pumps and the water coils. And then let's label them and draw in the piping and the decoupler. And so this is the primary side and this is the secondary side. So let's say you have 1,000 GPM and 44 degrees supply water coming out of the primary side. And the secondary pumps are also doing 1,000 GPM with that 44 degree water into the coils. So then you'll have 1,000 GPM coming out of the coils and let's say the water is 56 degrees at this point. No flow would be going through the decoupler. So you have 1,000 GPM and 56 degree water flowing back to the primary pumps and into the return side of the chillers. This gives us a 12 degree delta T. Now let's say we still have that 1,000 GPM and 44 degree water here, but to make the math easy, let's say the secondary pumps are only moving 50% of the supply water. So the other half would be diverted through the decoupler. So at this point, you'd have 500 GPM and 56 degree water coming through the secondary pumps and to the water coils. And so we'll have 500 GPM and 56 degree water coming out of the coils. Since 500 GPM were diverted to the decoupler, that water is going to mix with the water coming out of the coils and you're going to end up with a thousand GPM and 50 degree water over here going back to the return side of the chillers. And so that's a six degree delta T. So let's move this up a little. If we look at this in terms of BTU hours, BTU equals 500 times GPM times delta T. So for the first example, we'll have BTU equals 500 times a thousand times 12 which is 6 million BTU. And if we divide that by 12,000, that gives us 500 tons. And for the low delta T example, we have BTU equals 500 times 1,000 times six, and that's 3 million. We'll divide that by 12,000 and get 250 tons. So basically we're getting 250 tons of cooling out of our 500 ton chiller. When the return water isn't warm enough, chillers can't operate at peak efficiency. Let me make a little bit more room. So even if the demand was such that you only needed 50% of the cooling, running the pumps and chiller at 100% for 50% load is not efficient. This wastes energy. Now let's move this over. So I've explained this with respect to primary secondary pumping, but low delta T can be caused by various different things, such as dirty or improperly sized coils that don't transfer heat efficiently, or improperly sized control valves or valves that don't close properly, or improperly balanced systems. In my example, I made the math easy, but if the system was designed for 12 degree delta T, and let's say it's only getting 10 degree delta T due to oversized coils, then if we do the BTU math here, we get 500 times 1,000 times 10, and that gives us 417 tons. In this situation, you might get comfort complaints about not having enough cooling in the space because your 500 ton chiller is only delivering 417 tons of cooling. And this might result in someone increasing the pump speed or even another chiller being cycled on to meet the load. And both of these would be a waste of energy. So let's bring all of this back on screen. So this answers the question, what is low delta T and how it can affect your system and your efficiency and your energy use. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.